Hey everyone, my name is Ashton Montsevice and I just wanted to introduce myself to all you all before I dive into this topic. So hi, my name is Ashley. I'm currently a junior at Northwest School of the Arts. I'm 17 years old and yeah, I feel like that's all you need to know about me. So education inequality is an issue that has been very prevalent across the United States and it's become very prevalent not just among students. With getting equal access to opportunities and the best resources to succeed has become harder and harder for certain students. Now, this is a topic that I'm very passionate about because I'm a student, I go to school, and as I've grown up, I've been able to see more and more how this education inequality is prevalent across different schools in the U.S., but for this, I have decided to research education inequality in my local school district. Now, for background information, I am a student at Northwest School of the Arts. I already told you guys before, but that school is part of the Charlotte Mecklenburg County School District, also known as CMS for short. Now, CMS is composed of 176 different schools across the district. And across CMS, there seems to be a pattern between income zones and school report. In fact, the 2018 CMS school report showed a huge gap between education equality, and it showed a high achievement gap that correlates with low performance schools and high concentrations of poverty. So there was a correlation between the two in the 2018 CMS school report. Now, a school that would be an example of this would be West Charlotte High School, for example. This school is located in Beatty's Ford, Charlotte, which in 2017, 93% of students from West Charlotte reported to be from low-income zones. And this school is ranked in the bottom 50% of schools in North Carolina since 2022, being in the low 18%. And the pattern is that this school is very low-ranked among schools across CMS. And it's located in University Park in Washington Heights, an area in which the median household income is 67,885 per household, compared to the city average of 94,516 per household. Now let's compare West Charlotte to Audrey Kell. Audrey Kell is another high school in CMS that's actually in the top 5% of schools in North Carolina and one of the top CMS schools in the district. Now, Audrey Cal is located in Ballantyne, Charlotte, North Carolina with a median household income of 153,000. Now, as we can see by these two examples, there is a clear difference between median household income and academic ranking. But why is that? So here are some reasons. So United States public schools are funded by state, local, and federal governments. Now most of us know that schools are funded through taxes, predominantly property taxes. And at first this seems like a good idea because parents pay for the school that their children will attend to. But the more we look at it, the more we realize that this gives less funding and opportunities to poorer schools because less money is going into them, which limits academic performance. And this eventually leads to less money going into these schools over time, and it just becomes this ongoing cycle. And this system is prevalent not just in CMS, but across all schools in the United States. This inequality can be showcased in a variety of ways. An example of this would be AP courses. Now, a high school in CMS Let's take South Mech, located in Park Crossings, where the median household income is 120000 per household. Now, compared to Hardening High School, which is located in Wesley Hills, Charlotte, where the median household income is only 62000 South Mech offers 30 AP courses, while Hardening only offers five. So as you can see, the higher income median household has way more AP courses available than the lower median household income school. And this limits the students' accessibility 
to be able to take more challenging and college level courses. Another way that this can be seen is through reading proficiency levels. A group of students at UNC Charlotte made a map, which I'm going to put up on the screen, which shows the different reading proficiency levels across schools of CMS. Now, next to this map, I'm going to be putting a map of Charlotte, which shows the different areas with different household median incomes. Now, if you guys look at the two maps together, you see that the areas with the lowest median income also have the lowest reading proficiency rates. This also shows that there's a clear connection between median household income and better funded schools and overall better performing schools. And although it seems like it's just this cycle that continues to go on, there is action that can be taken. There are petitions that can be signed. I will link some down below for you guys to sign. But ultimately, the people that have the greatest say in this are our legislatures and our school district superintendent. And I hope this video is able to reach them somehow. And I hope that this evidence presented is able to shine a light on the education inequality based on median household income across the district of CMS. And I hope you guys learned something from this video. And I... Hope you all have a great day. Thank you.